So first of all, welcome to the workshop on innovative solutions towards building renovation. Um, some use, uh, I'm, no, my name is Larissa De Rosso, I'm working at the Architects Council of Europe, and I will do the moderation of, of this workshop. So first, few useful informations. If you have any questions, just put in the chat box. And we are recording this meeting, this workshop. Our agenda today, so the session starts at 3.30 now. We'll finish at six in, in the afternoon. So we will start first with presentation of the projects, Plugin Harvest, Inozeb, Hikos, HesBuild, and Heart. And at 5.10, we will have a discussion se session about the main challenges and lessons learned in the application of the technology on the pilots. We will have 10 minutes for questions uh, at the end of the session as well. So I give the word to Jakobus. Jakobus, please. Okay, thank you, Larissa. Uh, greetings from my side as well. Uh, my name is Jakos Mikhailidis. I'm a postdoctoral research associate in the Information Technologies Institute uh, of the Center for Research and Technology, Hellas. Uh, in the next slides, I will introduce uh, the goals and the concept of Plug and Harvest Stage 2020 project. While right after me, my colleagues will present aspects uh, of the project in more details. Uh, I'm mainly in the technical and administrative management of the project, actually supporting Professor Kosmatopoulos, who is the coordinator of the project. Uh, Larissa, if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, as a general overview uh, of the project, uh, Plug and Harvest is a Horizon 2020 project. Uh, it's funded under the Energy Efficiency in Buildings uh, 07-2017 topic. Uh, the Plug and Harvest Consortium is consisted by 14 partners. Uh, from four EU countries. The project started in September 2017. And right now we are at the most critical phase of the project, which is actual, the actual implementation of the developed solutions at the pilots, at the vision pilot sites. Uh, Planning Harvest includes only real life experimenting uh, with two pre pilot sites, one in Thessaloniki here in Serf, the Smart House, Greece, and the other one in Cardiff, Wales, in Cardiff University as well as four real-life full-scale demonstration sites. Two of them are residential. Uh, the one is a uh, building in St. Kirte, uh, Barcelona, Spain. And the other one are uh, two single-family houses in Cardiff, Wales. Uh, as well as uh, we have uh, two tertiary office buildings. Uh, one is the region of Western Macedonia, Greece, and the other one is the RWTH Aachen uh, uh, building. Uh, university building in Aachen, Germany. Uh, next slide, please, Larissa. Uh, now, the principle is the following. Since, the, since conventional insulation and technology infrastructure elements are not capable to guarantee energy efficiency on their own, smart ICT tools are necessary to, to manage controllable elements appropriately. So based on this principle, Plug and Harvest was perceived as an attempt, as an idea to marry these two uh, pillars. The main objective of the project is to develop a modular smart facade, smart facade that can be easily adapted to different building cases and requirements to move them one step closer to, to energy neutrality. The facade system should be, must be able, our facade system must be able to preserve low installation costs, uh, ensure circularity through reusable parts, ensure energy harvesting capabilities, resiliency through innovative aluminum profiles, able to withstand heavier technology loads, like outdoor batteries or HVACs, and ensure digital connectivity of the active controllable elements to become smarter through a dedicated data analysis and artificial intelligence, as mentioned before. Next slide, please, Larissa. Now, a few words about the quantified goals of the project. Um, the goal is to ensure installation cost to be less than 20% of conventional energy retrofitting solutions, when in production scale, of course. Reduce energy bills up to 50%, maximize exploitation of locally harvested energy up to 80% and ensure over 90% of end users are satisfied. Larissa, please go to the next slide. Uh, as implied already, uh, the plug and harvest solution is considered by two main pillars, the modular aluminum facade, abbreviated as uh, adaptable building envelope, ADB, and the smartness of the active elements uh, of the microgrid, which is an elaborate energy management system, the EMS as we call it. Next slide, please. Now, regarding the adaptable building envelope, the facade solution, 
in particular, it has been designed to be able to host detachable aluminum panels that can be easily configured to integrate both passive insulation elements like stone wool, for example, as well as active technological elements for energy harvesting and demand reduction like PVs, like HVACs and thermal collectors. Next slide, please, Larissa. Uh, okay. Uh, probably we have lost a few slides, but anyway. Uh, the other, let me let me say it uh, without a slide. So the other cases, uh, the other part of the project is the pillar is the smartness. Uh, the, uh, the smart the smart side is the smart pillar is consisted by four elements. Uh, we have elements for energy management and control of uh, buildings and uh, micro grid loads. We have also uh, tools for uh, uh, demand forecasting and flexibility forecasting. Uh, we also have tools for security based on CPAB technologies. And we also have uh, um, tools for safe uh, safe data healing uh, in case of any faults in are, are observed in the data uh, in order to ensure a safe control afterwards. So we heal the data using uh, AI technologies. So if you go to the next slide, please, Larissa, which is the final one from my side, uh, to conclude, just leave the floor to, to the next speakers. Today we will focus on the outcomes from the plug and harvest solution implementation in three cases. Uh, two pilot cases, the one in Germany, as mentioned before, and the other one in the region of Western, Western Macedonia. So the ones, the two ones, the office buildings, not the residential ones. And one pre-pilot case, which is the smart house in Sertis. Thank you for my service. Thank you, Jacobus. Uh, this is Tony Arena from from Barcelona, Spain, and we are working on on the circular economy aspects of the plug and harvest uh, projects. Next slide. One of the goals of the plug and harvest project is to develop and implement in several uh, demo sites that Jacobus have explained it before a circular product in a circular business uh, model. The aim of this is to allow the massive replicability and, and ensure the competitivity of the product with payback periods uh, less than 10 years, as it is explained in the in the goals of the of the project. Next slide, please. What have we done in, in the plug and harvest? We applied the circular economy guidelines to design a, a modular uh, ADBE, as Jacob was said, a table dynamic building envelope. We also develop an evaluation and impact assessment methodology of circular economy solutions, uh, not just for refurbishment solution, but it can be also applied to, to world building. And we are working right now to develop circular business models within the consortium and with the ADP manufacturer. Next slide, please. So this, these are two pictures uh, that describe the, the linear chain value and the circular chain value of the construction sector. So we can say that the linear chain value is out of date nowadays and does not allow meeting the, the current sustainability changes, challenges. And we might change rapidly to a circular chain, chain value. Next slide, please. So what we apply in this ADB? The ADB has been designed following the circular economy design requirements. Use safe material, think in system circularity, uh, define the right cycle, make it easy to disassemble, enhance material productivity, choose the inner cycle, preserve transparency and traceability, keep track of valuable materials, and rethink business models, as we said before. So the first one, uh, we have been care of the uh, material database. We have developed a material database. It has been created in order to work with non-toxic uh, materials during all the life cycle stages. Next slide, please. CDR2, think and design in system circularity, select recycle, recycled materials, design thinking in materials and system cycling, and also plan materials and system uh, recovery from the beginning of the design. Next slide, please. CDR3, uh, we work with the plug and harvest material database with the objective of tracking the most relevant information for our purposes. 
Next slide, CDR4 and CDR5. Avoid the scarce materials by asking the material suppliers. Working on the possibility of a circular business model like a facade as a service. This is far too common a reality right now because nowadays it's difficult to separate, to separate the property of, of a building and the property of a facade. Next slide, please. The next goal of the plug and harvest is the, the evaluation methodology and impact assessment of circular economy solutions. We have worked in five vectors, energy, material, water, social aspects and economy. And this methodology is based on, on levels framework, cradle to cradle principles and KPMG to value. Next slide, please. Okay, so this methodology includes the four building light stages, product construction, use stage and end of life. So we uh, cover the whole uh, building life cycle. Next slide, please. These are some examples of the, of the formulas we have uh, developed. Uh, you can note that the terms are grouped by uh, building life stages and can be represented uh, separately. Next slide, please. We applied this evaluation methodology in, uh, we will apply this uh, evaluation methodology in all the pilots, but we have done, we have already done it for, uh, for some pilots. In this case, it's just a, a conventional recruitment solution. How we, how we plan to do it also for the plug and harvest final recruitment solution. Next slide, please. So finally, we can uh, we can see these are uh, kind of results we expect from from this methodology. The person index uh, for every vertex uh, for every vector, and also the index of circularity for any vector and um, any stage in the in the building life cycle. Next slide, please. Oh, this is all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tony, for your presentation and a good afternoon also from my side. My name is Nico Fuchs from the RWTH University in Aachen, Germany. In the next slides, I'm going to demonstrate the implementation of the plug and harvest system on a pilot building in Aachen. Uh, we considered the physics building of our university in the project, uh, like we can see it on the right hand side. It gets clear that it has a very clear grid and is therefore well suitable for the project idea. It has an average annual heating demand of over 250 kilowatt hour per square meter a year and therefore a high need for energy refurbishment. We consider three office rooms on the southern facade in the uh, project. During a pre-monitoring, we found out this, that almost no heating energy was needed in the investigated rooms because of the high internal and solar gains. Therefore, we focused more on ventilation and cooling. On the next slide, I want to demonstrate the implementation by a little video from our YouTube channel. Um, like we can see on the video, we use the balconies, which are situated on each floor to implement the facade. First, we begin after the setup of the construction site to install um, some steel profiles at the lower and the upper part. They are fixed in the concrete structure. It's hanging a little, <laughs> I'm really sorry for it. At the moment, I cannot see the video. Uh, if it's not working, Larissa, please skip it and we will uh, going on with the next slide. I, I could see it. Can can anyone else see it as well? Yes, yes, yes. We are, we are watching the video. Oh, great. Then it's fine. watch it until the end. I hope that I will be back because I cannot see the slides. I'm just going to speak free. Um, so we installed um, prefabricated window frames in the steel profiles at the lower and the upper part um, and in the interspace between the existing facade and the new facade we could uh, integrate insulation and HVAC components. I think Larissa you're already on the next slide I can see them. Um, if you are on the next slide we can see on the right hand side a picture of the uh, finished facade system and the interspace between the new and the old facade which we are using for the HVAC components and the insulation. On the next slide I'm going to show the implementation of the HVAC components 
three components, one per each considered room. In the first room, we implemented uh, a reversible monoblock heat pump with a small installation depth of only 16 centimeter. We tried to develop a thinner one, but without success. In the second room, we installed a decentral ventilation unit. It's hanging on the inner panel of the facade. And in the third room, we installed a central ventilation unit. The interspace, uh, the remaining interspace on the photos was later on filled with insulation. On the last slide, I want to evaluate um, the retrofit by post and pre retrofit monitoring data. Therefore, I brought three days before and after refurbishment with approximately the same outdoor conditions. We can see uh, on the yellow line the indoor temperatures of the room with the air conditioning. Before refurbishment, they are up to 30 degrees Celsius and therefore we have a low thermal comfort in the room. After the retrofit, we could decrease the temperatures to the blue line to under 25, 24 degrees. But therefore we needed a high electrical power input here on the second x-axis in the blue dotted line of over 500 watt electric power over the whole day. So our project shows that there's a high dependency of sensible renovation measures on the framework conditions of the specific room, uh, what has to be kept in mind in future works. With this outview, I want to, to handle over to the next project. Thanks for your attention. Uh, hello from my side. I'm uh, Nikos Margaritis, mechanical engineer offering uh, technical support uh, to Region of Macedonia as a, as a research scientist in uh, uh, Seth Siperis, uh, uh, Chemical Process and Energy Resources Institute. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, regarding the pilot uh, site in, uh, in uh, Greece, and, uh, this is uh, the building in the photo, and the smart facade uh, will be installed in the two um, uh, uh, opposite uh, faces, southwest and uh, southeast side, uh, inside in the cycles uh, in the cycles in the photo. Uh, Floors to be retrofitted is first and second. Um, now we're talking about uh, four offices uh, in total, two in each um, uh, floor. And uh, as you can see, the picture below it's a symmetrical building architecture. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, here is the southeast um, uh, uh, spot that. Uh, uh, facade will uh, be installed and also in the next slide you can see the southwest uh, uh, spot of the building um, uh, where the uh, facade will be uh, also installed. Uh, next slide. Uh, regarding the technical specifications of the facade to be installed in the next uh, two months um, uh, because we have uh, the contractor, but we're waiting uh, for the materials and profiles and uh, other um, equipment to be uh, included in this uh, facade. And we have aluminum profile, a BIPV of around 154 um, uh, square meters. It's a perfect glass uh, with a power, power of uh, 8.1 kilowatts thin film. Uh, four inverters and four charge controllers um, uh, and uh, 24 batteries. Uh, to offer one day autonomy uh, at least. Uh, the system will have also insulation of, insulation of uh, three uh, centimeters and um, below um, uh, each window, one in each office, um, a ventilation heat recovery device will be installed uh, in order to increase the energy efficiency of these um, uh, offices. Uh, next slide. Uh, also, in these offices, some um, uh, uh, proper uh, monitoring um, uh, equipment has been installed. Um, uh, tablets of the humidity sensors, uh, motion light sensors, door window sensors, energy meters for, the, um, uh, uh, for the, uh, checking the energy consumption in the building in these offices. Uh, smart sockets, uh, calorimeters for the, um, uh, measuring the energy consumption of thermal radiators. Thermostatic valves, CO2 sensors, uh, weather stations in, in the roof, um, uh, and some LED uh, lights. All this equipment uh, will be used in order to assess the pre and post mon monitoring and post uh, phase, monitoring phase of the building. Next slide. Uh, here we have some uh, first results, some uh, from the monitoring um, phase. Uh, the building um, is occupied from uh, uh, from nine to three o'clock because well, there, there is other um, offices of uh, public employees. Uh, so we we see in the uh, upper picture um, uh, an increase in energy consumption and 
uh, in these uh, hours. Uh, and next slide also we see um, uh, the temperature, um, uh, intro temperature uh, from uh, three different uh, sensors uh, around uh, inside the office. Uh, the lower temperature is um, uh, recorded from the sensor that is near the window, uh, whereas the other ones are more inside in the office. Uh, and the last slide, uh, we have the plan. Um, uh, so uh, now we are um, in the pre-monitoring phase um, uh, that lasts from, from April uh, until October um, 2021. Uh, collection of monitoring data for assessing the energy state of free pilot before the smart facade apl application. Um, uh, as I said before, uh, we expect that we have the end of construction uh, phase until um, uh, mid of November. Uh, and then we will be able to collect um, uh, data uh, for the post-monitoring uh, phase uh, till uh, the end of the project in order to assess the overall energy, um, uh, or the overall impact in the energy phase of the building and the impact that these uh, smart facades uh, will have um, uh, in this building uh, in Grevena. Thank you for my side. Uh, Asimina, you're muted probably. I don't know if you... Asimina, can you hear us? Nico or anyone else, can you hear me or is it... We can hear you, but we yes. can't hear oh, you. Okay. <laughs> I think Asmina is muted. Unfortunately, I cannot unmute it her, so I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Asimina? Asimina, probably she cannot hear us, I don't know. I can see here in the video, but... Uh, maybe... I think yeah. she, she will try to access the meeting again, right? Probably yes. I don't know if I mean I can I can move on. I don't know. I can move on from from her side, but uh, just to just to make sure that she wants to say something more. But uh, I don't know. Probably was a problem with her machine entirely because. Yes, could be. Asimina? Can you hear me now? Yes. Perfectly. Sorry for the conversation. I don't know what happened. I was pressing the unmute button, but nothing happened. So I had to re-log in. Okay. Uh, thank you, Nico. Sorry for the, the convenience, everyone. My name is Asimina Dimara, and I am an ICT software engineer in CERF ITI. And today I'm going to, pre to present you our CERF uh, smart house situated in Thessaloniki. Uh, next slide, please. A smart house is uh, used as a test bed for the plug and harvest project and uh, its goal is to function under the same requirements and configurations with a real project environment and operate without any problems. Uh, any setup problems that may occur uh, can be fixed before the final deployment. A smart house is equipped with functional uh, automation devices and systems which are already tested, verified and operate uneventfully. Uh, it is the first NZEV smart house in Greece and it is a rapid prototyping and novel technologies demonstration infrastructure resembling a real domestic building. 
It combines enhanced and construction materials and intelligent ICT solutions, creating a future-proof, sustainable and active testing, validating and evaluating ecosystem. Next slide, please. Uh, there is already highly flexible and adaptable installation PVs and inverters and batteries in the smart house, as you can see in this picture. We also have a micro grid and processes and tools for optimization uh, running real time. Next slide, please. There is also an enhanced insulation in multiple levels, as depicted in this slide. It covers all building levels. Next slide, please. A, a room was selected to be used as a pre-pilot for the plug and harvest and its bedrooms uh, too, as you can see the floor plan. Uh, this room is now used only for the plug and harvest project, both for the ICT components and the deep ADB facade. Next slide, please. Uh, the equipment installed is as depicted in this figure. The installation points of the pre-pilot smart house were chosen after a routine checking of the room and the storm sensors and other devices are a wireless actuator light dimmer, an occupancy sensor which is an active infrared beam counter, a temperature humidity sensor, a luminance sensor, and an HVAC system cassette, and the light stealth on off and consumption relay to control the lights. Next slide, please. All the information from the, be the bedroom is depicted real time to the search UI as presented in this figure. All vanities are monitored, also we can have alarms to send to the user. Next slide, please. So we had to use the, exi the existing ICT infrastructure from the search IT out the Cert ITI smart house, uh, which involves the sensor devices, NRPI, and then MQTT. So we use the MQTT to push data streams to the plug and harvest ICT module and the BMS server uh, to create a flexible and adaptable system. Next slide, please. Moreover, the system receives any controls from the BMS and through the RPI and the MQTT sends the controls to the devices based on recommended actions from the ICT tools from the plug and harvest. Next slide, please. Finally, we may observe here the necessary technical elements that are estimated to be placed to the smart house that constitutes of a 10 SI frames. Thank you. Okay, it's my turn. Thank you very much, everybody, to be here, all the attendants, and also for, to the organization to the organization of this event. So, my name is Michele Vavallo. I'm um, coordinator of the Reynolds project. is accelerating energy renovation solution for zero energy building and neighborhood. I work into the R&D department of uh, a company named Solintel in Spain. So. Um, yeah, general overview of the project, uh, just a short introduction. Uh, this is a project that uh, is, in, is inside the Horizon 2020, is an energy efficiency building uh, project, in the, in the, it's a call of 2017. And um, um, the project lasts uh, 48 months, it started in October 2017, and uh, this month, September, is the, the, the end, uh, the final. Uh, the final uh, mount. So we are 19 European partners. You can have a look at them in the right part of the of this slide. You have all the logos of each one of them. I think it's easy to, to read. And um, the last uh, information is that we uh, have two demonstrate demonstrator, real building, one in Boro in Estonia and the other one in Durango in the north of Spain, and three virtual demonstration building. You know, one big shopping mall in the north of Italy, one residential in uh, in um, Bulgaria, and uh, one office in Greece. We use this virtual demonstrator for uh, setting up, configured, also demonstrated all the system that we're um, going to show to you. It's uh, function, it, it's functioning, and it could be used all for the for the real pilot that we will also see in the end of this presentation. The objective of this project is, uh, for one side, uh, work and create a technological attractive solution related to a multifunctional modular plug and plug system. It's a system that they, we have unit that uh, are easy to install, easy to transport, cheaper, easy to uh, revamp uh, because you can uh, change the, 
the 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 the, the outfit of the of it is customizable and um, also is easy to uh, um, is plug and play so it's easy to install on just not for the contractors but also for uh, the future maintenance of of the facade from the other side, we also have a well-designed renovation methodology based on cloud uh, collaborative environment, which involve all the stakeholders uh, related to the construction process from the design to the plan to the manufacturing, also for the, um, the, the, the maintenance as well. And uh, also taking into consideration the property value as the main trigger of the to zero energy uh, renovation market. We have three very important impact in this project. Uh, it is 16% of cost reduction of uh, the overall renovation of uh, the deep renovation of a residential building, 60% of uh, reduction in energy consumption and 65% of uh, reduction in uh, and renovation process uh, time. Um, yeah, let's start and let me in start introducing to you the first part that is the hardware part of the of uh, our results. This is the uh, modular facade. Well, uh, we have different unit here. You can see the first two um, pictures. We call them opaque unit. Um, we have a uh, few material in the, cat in the catalog. You can see, for example, the white or clear ceramic. Or, for example, in the left side, you can see the wood plastic combo side or uh, wooden uh, peeling surface. Of course, um, it is just for testing. Uh, in the catalog, we had more colors, but in the future, uh, we, uh, we could integrate in, the, our, in our A catalog, electronic catalog, more, uh, more material and more surfaces for the future marketability of our uh, solution. We will see the example later on. Just um, and we will talk about this. Uh, uh, yeah, we have also the unit uh, in which we have the, uh, the the yes the the window. Uh, the window has been created by one of the of our partner. is a German, Germany manufacturer. This window is uh, innovative in, in the sense that there is a, a, a smart control of ventilation and also heat interchange between outside and inside environment. And the other two, you have the photovoltaic uh, panel and the thermal panel. You have also a mock-up, uh, a picture of the mock-up after the first uh, production of the of, yeah, or the first prototypes that have been also installed inside the the, the renovation uh, of the, the building that has been renovated. I just have a comment here. Uh, our proposals uh, here in, in this aspect was, uh, were in the beginning, was in the beginning to uh, achieve the tier L7, but I have to say that in this case, after the testing, uh, according to uh, European standard testing, uh, for, for example, impact resistance, fire and humidity resistance and wind resistance as well, uh, all the standards have been passed uh, according to a standard regulation. So I, we, can, we could consider this prototype very close to the market. It should, like, it should be like TRL9. Of course, we are now in the moment in which we are testing in real life, but just to let you know that uh, it, it works. Yeah, next slide, we have the last, the other part of our project, this is the software part. We have a, a bunch of tools we have created. The first one is uh, this platform. This platform stays on the top of all the tools that work for it. And uh, it's a collaborative, a collaborative environment. In this, uh, all the stakeholders, architect, owners, engineers, and whatsoever, could be uh, could create a, an account, could create a project. Uh, they could also create KPIs for the project and define which are the target they want to to achieve in this renovation project and consider which is the the best scenario. For example, it could be to achieve the maximum uh, energy efficiency in the renovation, or if you have a limit of budget, you put the limit and for that you take the decision about this the scenarios. This platform is based on the IC, IF, um, I, um, FC viewers, beam model, and smart logistic and construction management tools. We will see them in the next slide, in which, for example, we have a, the example of the same uh, platform where you can recall the beam model of the building that could be also your um, uh, place in, the, in, well, in Europe, in this case, we have a, in the GIS context, 
because in this case the platform could harvest and could retrieve uh, geographical data from another tool that I'm going to present, introduce to you later on, and you can uh, take all the data related to the weather, minimum, maximum, uh, maximum uh, uh, heating day, cooling day, and all the information that are used for the simulation. In fact, if we go in the next slide, you have in uh, yeah in a, in a glance uh, you have uh, uh, how it it worked. Uh, it works. We, we have and and the top of everything, the platform you see there, Reynolds Zeb uh, platform, and in, in the bottom all the tool um, gears. I will say you have a, the first one is the IFC builder of the Open Beam Foki that is being has been created uh, purposely. Um, we will see and I will introduce to you Cyperterm E Plus, Cyperterm Improvement uh, that are tools that have been generated and. Uh, um, configured by one of our partners, Sipe, um, and the, the last one, Archimedes, and everything is working for the platform. And uh, in next slide, what we are going to see is the first tool, and to understand, I'll just introduce to you which is the mechanisms behind this, uh, this tool. It is an uh, IFC builder. Uh, it works. Um, you know, what we did is just um, uh, extract a laser scan from the real pilot. What you see here is one of the real pilot in Estonia. That is the private, the big private building we have renovated. And you see the first image of the point cloud you we 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 got, and from this uh, this tool is uh, just automatically it automatically it generates the the beam. The, the business uh, information model that will be used inside the platform for the next step. It is automatic, it is easy, and um, yes, you can also have a look at the, this tool on, online. It is, uh, it is free, I think. In the next slide, we have the, ne the, other, the other tool that is the Foki one. I think that it, this is the most, one of the most important because it's more uh, close to the client and understandable. Um, uh, we use the BIM model we have generated in the other tools, in the other tool. And what we use here, we have introduced the uh, electronic catalog related to the uh, plug and play units we have created in, in the project. You remember the first solution I showed to, I show you to everybody. So uh, what is going on here is that when you open the tool, you can play uh, moving uh, digitally the, the the building, and you can stick the the panel you want. Each panel you, could, you can stick the opac, the photovoltaic, the windows, and each panel contains also the heating information you value and stuff like that that they are used for the estimation of the heating improvement uh, in the building. You can see in the in, on the bottom of uh, of the slide all the information that are linked to each one of these uh, click. It's an easy click, you can drag uh, or you can decide which kind of color, everything uh, you would like to, just to have a look and to understand which is the final uh, uh, aesthetics of your building before taking the decision to, to go on. Uh, this is, this is uh, uh, either for aesthetic issue to see if you like or not, or for understanding which is the improvement you are expecting from the energy um, behavior of the building. Because, um, for example, in next slide, what you see is another tool that is uh, Cyperm He Plus. What you do here is, um, uh, according to the beam you have charged, you, uh, have, you, uh, you have opportunity to change the, the thermal um, insulation of each uh, wall, uh, windows, that uh, are, because you have to do this energy audit, audit of the building. You have to see how uh, the, the walls are. And uh, you can do the configuration to understand which is the energy status, energy efficiency status of the, of the building. So this is uh, for us the baseline for the validation. Uh, it is like, uh, for example, uh, the building is uh, be before the renovation. So you use this um, information for like a baseline for the post retrofitting after uh, the deep retrofitting of the, of the building. And in fact, with this same tool, what you can do afterward also is understanding uh, after installing all the Renozep solution, which is uh, the energy behavior afterward. And you can do this comparison also supported by the next uh, tool that we can see in the in next slide. 
the name is cypherterm improvements you what you what this what this tool does is just make this comparison between pre and post retrofitting uh, are supported by the other tool that is cypherterm plus and everything is working automatically in, uh, and all the estimation are are correct so this is an example for example <laughs> example and you can see for example in the table the differences between um, pre and post yeah next slide actually uh this part is related to the design so once you uh took the decision and uh, take the decision and and, and have a, an idea about what uh, should be your uh, projects now uh, this tool is for uh, the gun chart and also the management plan for supporting you in into the manufacturing and uh, in ret retrofitting it's, it, itself so you can see here all the time, the tasks, uh, all, and you can also make uh, estimation about costs uh, is, a, is, typical, is a typical management tool. And this tool is also very much linked to the next slide. It is uh, the one related to the smart logistic management uh, tool. What the, we did is uh, for supporting the logistic, for example, of all the, the element has to be assembled on, on site. Um, we have created the, an I, um, IQ codes uh, that uh, uh, by which, for example, contractor could scan by, by phone and retrieve information useful for the installation. For example, you can retry video to let to help you to understand how to uh, click uh, in the plug and play units or any other assembly uh, information. This information, the day of tomorrow, it is not set up for uh, this project but the day of tomorrow could also be used for the after the the installation for the uh, for the for the client and for the um, yeah for the monitoring of uh, the, the the equipment and stuff like that just to understand if uh, everything is working on if you have to retry uh, information that helps you for the maintenance and, and so on Next slide in, in, instead is related to the uh, knowledge base to solution. This is actually the one related to the GIS system we have seen in the beginning. Um, this tool has been created by another partner, this year, Man Manchester University in UK. And uh, this, automatically this tool supports the, the platform uh, getting info ge geographical and geolocalization, geolocal information related to the weather and heating, cooling, uh, grade degree, and uh, minimum, maximum, average, all the information that I use for the estimation of energy uh, behavior of the building. Um, yeah, in the next slide, we, this is the last one. I just tried um, to put everything in one. I think that you can, uh, yeah, it's, it's visible. So we have the both of uh, the two real uh, pilot. The first one is the Indurango. Is a 60 uh, pri uh, public building. It, 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 um, the Durango municipality is the owner. You have the first picture is the the picture has the building was before the project. Second picture is uh, the uh, taken from the Foki to after the first design. You see, for example, that uh, decide to put the to to change the color to put in the south. Uh, uh surface and south face the pv system so it is uh, the rendering of the building in the third picture you have the real the real building after almost uh the the finalization of the retrofitting activity you can see that it's very close and um, and we are very proud about, about that and it's very close to the rendering and uh, yeah, so far uh, we are in the last month and we are applying option D of the measurement and verification plan. So we are in the middle of the validation. We don't know actually uh, what will be the improvement, but according to our estimation, uh, improvement should be about 80%, uh, 80% about the building, uh, thanks to the renovation and to the solution that uh, uh, Reynolds had brought to, the, to this to the project. Second building is in Boru. Is uh, sorry, uh, second building is a Boru. Is 90, 92 building. Is a private. Is a big one. Uh, you have the first picture again. Is the real. The second one was in white. 
but afterward they decide to maintain a bit the color and uh, yeah you have the the building there with some previous system as well and in this case we expect to achieve the 53 percent of improvement this is uh this was my last comment my last last slide thank you very much thank you very much yes thank you um i thank you organizers for giving the opportunity to give you a flavor of the uh, recost project uh, today i have uh, decided to present our work within the residential uh, retrofit assessment uh, platform uh, next slide uh, the project is uh, a european project that uh, the other projects uh, duration of about four years um, we have been um, 19 participants from from different uh, european countries and we have tested our developments in uh, four residential multifamily dwellings in spain denmark switzerland and united uh, kingdom next slide um, the objective and focus of the recourse project is has been to develop uh, you could say cost efficiency optimization of renovation scenarios and the focus in doing that has been to identify the optimal balance between uh, applying building energy efficiency measures uh, measures to improve the indoor environmental quality and measures to increase the on-site renewable energy generation uh, so this means we have worked with all three items at the same time and tried to identify the, the right balance that provides the least cost of, of this renovation and the greatest uh, benefits. Uh, then we have looked into how we could uh, make the uh, assessment process uh, more uh, efficient and also make it possible to deliver uh, uh, refurbishment scenarios that are customized uh, to the individual building and to the needs of the end users and the uh, building owner. And finally, uh, you could say developing a technical solution that uh, is uh, may be uh, very efficient and, and very cost effective it's still a long way for the building owner to realize uh, such a renovation uh, activity. So therefore we have also focused on uh, developing methodologies to evaluate uh, different business models and checklists of what to uh, do and decide upon in order to develop a refurbishment uh, project. Next slide, please. Uh, the overall approach of the of the recost project has been that we have both uh, looked at the renovation process so this means both the planning process through the uh, renovation assessment platform uh, on the project delivery how could we make the uh, construction phase uh, more efficient and improve the quality and finally also looked into the operation phase how could we by applying um, intelligent energy management systems uh, ensure that uh, design intentions are realized in the constructed uh, building. Then we have also uh, looked into different technologies that could uh, be applied and could improve uh, the efficiency of the, of the building. And these have been related both to energy efficiency measures as well as to measures to on-site uh, renewable energy uh, production. And then we have uh, tested both the uh, you would say development of the renovation or refurbishment process as well as the uh, different technologies on these four um, multifamily uh, dwellings in these uh, four different countries. Today, uh, I will mainly focus on presenting the outcome of the renovation assessment platform. So this means this part of the, our work on the process phase. Next slide, please. Uh, when we look into the uh, look, then we can see that there are uh, uh, many different tools uh, developed already that can help in uh, developing uh, renovation scenarios. Uh, our focus in the recourse project has been to develop a virtual platform 
where we can uh, utilize these many different tools in order to uh, optimize and identify uh, suitable renovation scenarios. Uh, the slide here shows uh, the, the different tools that are implemented so far. Uh, we have a tool called EPQR, which are focusing on, on analyzing the cost of different renovation scenarios and doing the uh, energy audit uh, of the building. We have a tool called Eco Solutions, which focuses on uh, renewable energy production and the cost of different uh, solutions. We have uh, an LCA tool evaluating the climate and the environmental impact of different uh, uh, solutions. And then we also have some other tools looking into the financial part uh, and the uh, economy of the renovation process. And the idea about the platform is that we actually can develop uh, optimized scenarios uh, uh, that can be uh, developed depending on uh, your focus. Is you're focusing on optimizing energy performance, CO2 emission, or cost, then you can uh, develop a number of uh, scenarios that are suitable, making you making it, making it possible for you to select the scenario you think uh, are the best. Uh, but we also know that when we consider different criteria. Uh, like uh, energy use, investment cost, life cycle cost, improvement of indoor air quality. There is rarely one solution that is the best solution. Yes, the next slide, please. So therefore, uh, in the methodology in finding solutions, we have uh, not focused it on finding one optimum solution, but we have uh, focused on defining what we call the Pareto front. So this means what solutions are, um, you could say, the best solutions when we combine uh, different uh, criteria. Here, for example, is showing uh, the uh, two parameters, uh, primary energy consumption and global cost. And there you can see there are a number of solutions that are having, you could say, the lowest global cost at a certain uh, reduction in primary energy. So this means that when you are selecting a renovation scenario, you should select one of the scenarios that are on the uh, on the uh, uh, line in the in the figure. And similar, when we have other criteria, we also need to uh, evaluate it maybe uh, according to environmental uh, performance or to indoor environmental uh, quality. So this means based on these outcomes, you can. You can point on a few number of scenarios which are optimum and then make your selection. Next slide, please. Uh, but of course, the, the technical assessment of the best performing uh, scenario is just, you could say, for the building owner, is just one of the problems that you need to uh, uh, tackle. Uh, when you have the um, uh, the uh, select a scenario, you need to identify how do I finance the uh, these renovation scenario? And, and is the scenario including the financing the, the optimum business model uh, for, for, for the building owner? Could, would it be maybe more uh, beneficial to invest more or less uh, and uh, achieve a different outcome? Would that be provide a better uh, business for the building owner. So the building owner need to have some assistance in uh, actually in selecting among the different, you could say, optimum scenarios to find the scenario and the action plan that uh, provides the best uh, option for the building owner. The next slide. So therefore we have uh, developed a, a business, we call it a business model kit, which can guide the building owner in, in the process and where uh, the building owner can find answers to the many different uh, questions that are on this, uh, on this slide. So how do I start? How do I manage it? Uh, what about finance? Where are the major risks? Uh, is it possible to obtain some subsidies to assist in the financing? And so on and so on. So this is a, a document 
uh, helping the building owner through the whole uh, process of the uh, renovation. Next slide, please. We have tested uh, this uh, methodology, the, the, the business model kit, as well as the uh, assessment, uh, renovation assessment platform on uh, some what we call early adopter sites. So there we have a demonstrate, have a, we have a demo site in Freiburg. Uh, we have uh, one there we have applied the technology. We have tested it on the, on the building uh, owner, had a number of uh, workshop developing scenarios and received uh, feedback from, from the team uh, in order to improve uh, the me methodology. Uh, and then we have implemented, you could say, the guidelines or the recommendations we have received from from the um, people uh, adopting the methodology, and then we have uh, implemented those into the uh, system. Next slide. Um, so this early adopter site is uh, is uh, actually six buildings and, and about thirteen thousand square meters heated floor area uh, that are have a quite uh, poor uh, energy uh, rating. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and there we have done the analysis, uh, you could say the energy auditing of the building complex, uh, suggested um, uh, a number of different uh, renovation measures uh, and, and uh, estimated the cost of these uh, measures. Uh, next slide, please. And then uh, develop the uh, calculations on what, what energy savings could be achieved uh, depending on what measures were applied. Uh, and then based on that, uh, developed uh, suitable scenarios or promising scenarios for the renovation of the uh, whole uh, building site. Next slide, please. Uh, so this has uh, based, you could say, created uh, an environment, uh, making it easier for the uh, building owner actually to select uh, the option or the scenario that suits, you could say, the needs of the users and the needs of the building uh, owner. Next slide, please. In order to, uh, you could say, uh, help uh, building owners and designers through the process, we have uh, developed what we call a recourse e-learning platform. Uh, so there we have, uh, 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 I think, about 15 or 17 uh, small lectures uh, describing uh, the different uh, stages in the in the uh, renovation process, uh, including you could say background material uh, for um, both consultants as well as, as building owners to uh, learn about the methodology and learn about the, the tools. I think that was the last slide. Thank you. Larissa? Yes, uh, now is his build. His building. Uh, um, Who's telling us right now? Which is the project? His building. Okay. His, his build project. From Resbuild, right? Resbuild, yeah. anyone from? Yes. Susanna? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> not, ah, no, no, not, not Susanna, but Susanna. Garayua. Gara, 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 yeah. Um, the other Susanna. Okay. Uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, the, 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 the 
person responsible for the project is not here yet. Let's move on to the next one. So which will be hard. Is Claudio here? Yes, I can see Claudio Del Perro. I don't know if he can hear us or if he was, he's in the middle of something because was not in the wasn't expected actually though. Claudio, do you want to to present? Claudio, can you hear us? Mm. Uh, I'm not really sure because we have both uh, uh, Susanna and Claudio uh, as a, uh, attendees, but uh, I'm not sure if they can get in in the uh, as as a speaker. Please, uh, could you please uh, write in the chat if you are experiencing uh, any problem? Okay, uh, Susanna just informed me that the coordinator could not attend to the meeting. Susanna, would you like to present uh, on his behalf? The His Beauty Project. Okay, yes, we cannot hear her, so I guess so we go to heart anyway. Uh, and then, so Claudio, uh, can you hear us? Uh, Claudio Del Pedro. Uh, Larissa, just a, probably a silly question, but is there room for these speakers to, to join as speakers because we are 10 out of 10? Is this a problem probably that they cannot share their audio or, or okay. video because we are 10 out of 10? So That's a good question. Um, should, should we make a try perhaps? Uh, I, can, I, I, can, I can try to log out and check if someone, can, uh, someone else can enter because or perhaps if uh, uh, someone from, uh, uh, yeah, someone has already uh, left. Some people who will not uh, do the discussion here. Okay. We cannot do the discussion. Okay, Claudio. Hello, can Claudio. you hear me? Susanna, perfect, you are here. Yeah, sorry, but I was not allowed to enter. I'm, I'm so sorry about that. There were many, too many users. I'm sorry. Yes. It's happened the same to me, Larissa, and the same is happening for my coordinator. It's impossible for him to, to enter into the meeting because the session is full. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it, it's yeah. a new tool, so I guess we are all uh, discovering the tool now, right? I, I tried all the possible solutions, but uh, okay. I couldn't figure out. I'm sorry about that. Susanna, uh, so would you present or would, should we wait the coordinator? Well, how do you uh, apparently, she can access into the platform, uh, so I don't know if you can check what is happening with uh, the technical issues of the platform, if it is because the session is full or what is happening. Um, it is not possible for him to enter, I will try, but obviously I am not going to enter into the details of the technical aspects. Uh, I, I will offer a more general overview of the project. Okay. Uh, perhaps if, if there is someone in the session that will not participate in the discussion session, uh, if you could leave uh, the room, so then perhaps we could uh, open the space uh, for the coordinator. I don't know if someone uh, from um, Plugging Harvest Project. Yes, 
I don't know, uh, Nico, Sora, Simina, I don't know if you would like to participate in the second session. I will, I will ask him, I, will, I have them on Skype, so I will ask them more directly. Give me a, a few, one to one minute or so. I'm sorry. So uh, while we are sorting the, the problem, can we move on to Claudio? So Claudio can present okay. and then Susanna, we, we understand how we are going to do. Carmen, uh, apparently the rule is, uh, the rule is full. So okay, uh, you can enter it so again, okay? Okay, okay, okay. I can start, perfect. Yes. So Some people, uh, are, still people are leaving their room now, maybe it's possible uh, for you. It's better to mute her. Okay, so, um, I will present uh, the Heart Project. Uh, it is a project started in 2017, and we are almost at the end of the project. Uh, we are 16 partners, and uh, among them, just four research entities. The other are uh, small, medium companies. Next uh, slide, please. So, Heart is a toolkit that include includes. Uh, Technologies for transforming existing buildings into smart buildings. The application context of art is the central and southern Europe. Uh, you, as you can see in that in that map, where we have to face uh, uh, heating uh, issues, but also cooling problem. Let's say overheating, also because of uh, climate change. And uh, the application target of the project are multi-story residential building, typical social housing buildings as the one you can see in that picture. So the contribution of HART is to improve the European building renovation process uh, with a simplification, to reduce the total energy consumption, integrating renewables in uh, existing buildings, to involve stakeholders and also to support energy financing. and. Uh, also to give the possibility to extend the uh, the concept of the project also to uh, new buildings, not just uh, existing ones. Next slide, please. So the uh, main five objectives of the projects are, first uh, of all, to develop a systemic and cost uh, optimal solutions for energy retrofit. It's important to say systemic because this solution must work synergistically together in, in an integrated way. Objective number two, to develop, update and adapt uh, innovative technologies for their systemic integration. Number three, to foster buildings smart upgrade, uh, as I told you before, to transform outdated buildings into smart buildings. And number four, to uh, support and improve the decision-making process, so to simplify the decision-making profit before the retrofit. and Last but not least, to promote uh, energy efficient uh, financing. Next slide, thank you. And uh, so we, here you can see uh, uh, the structure of the toolkit that is composed by nine main elements. Uh, the first one is a multifunctional external thermal insulation that can, can be applied um, on the existing wall and is providing insulation, but also creating a gap where we can install new wires and pipes that simplify the retrofit. Number two, uh, we uh, provide retrofit components and techniques for uh, existing windows, so to, to retrofit existing windows without um, dismissing them. And then the third component are universal PV tiles because a smart building must provide, generate energy, so renewable energy in particular. So these PV tiles are conceived to be installed on existing tile roofs. Then we have a cloud platform that I will describe better later. Then we have uh, DC, so direct current smart fan coils that are um, uh, designed to substitute existing radiators, providing heating and um, cooling using the same existing pipes, also if they are not insulated. Then we have thermal storage and a battery pack that is not, uh, let's say, um, uh, a product of the research, is just uh, an element that we buy off the shelf and we can integrate in the toolkit. 
Then we have a DC heat pump, again in direct current, that is powered directly by the photovoltaic system. And the last element is what we call MIMO, is a multi-input, multi-output converter that is, um, let's say, managing all the electricity fluxes in, within the building and also uh, inter exchanging the, the energy with the grid. Next, please. Uh, so here you can see the structure of the cloud-based uh, platform. So we have a simplified energy model running on this platform and we can use it before the retrofit in the decision making uh, phase. So the construction stakeholder, the funding stakeholder can interact with the platform to identify the best uh, retrofit strategy. So the cost optimal one among the different possible configurations of the platform uh, allow to uh, to know which is the cost optimal thickness of the insulation for example the cost optimal amount of uh, uh, pv panels and so on then after the retrofit this the same platform acts uh, as an energy management tool so the same model of the building run on the platform but uh, retrieving the uh, real data from, from the field and also um, getting information from the weather forecast service and from the smart grid. So putting together all this information, the, um, the, let's say the brain of the platform is able to identify the best uh, energy management logic and also is providing interaction with the different uh, users, for example, using a mobile app, but also with the other stakeholders. So for example, the management stakeholder is able to identify if there are technical problems and the fund stakeholder is able to identify if there are um, underperformance of the investment. So if the saving, spectral saving uh, of, the, of the building is not that expected at, uh, in, in, the, in the design phase. Next uh, slide, please. So we have two case studies. One is in Italy, in Bagnolo in Piano, close to Reggio Emilia. Uh, the building is, let's say, almost finished. Here you can see the picture before the retrofit and uh, the rendering after the retrofit with the new envelope and some details of the new facade. So we are installing all the uh, technologies of the toolkit in this building and it will be, let's say, up and running in 15 days when we begin the uh, heating season. Then we have a second case study in the next slide, please. Uh, oh, sorry, there are still the three uh, still picture of the of the um, uh, of the first case study in the in the next slide. Uh, uh, because we have uh, a detail of the installation of the facade that it's important to underline that uh, can be installed without scaffolding, so using just a platform. Uh, this simplify and also reduce the cost of installation of, uh, of the facade. And then you can see a detail of the free thermal storages and uh, a smartphone coil that is me that I'm explaining the function of, of the smartphone coil to, to the installers and some other partners of the of the project. Next slide. So this is the second case study in Lyon in France. Uh, this is uh, delayed a little bit to, uh, compared to the first one because let's say we would like to test the technologies in the first case study then before applying to the second one. So currently we started the retrofit process. We are just doing the uh, let's say preparation works, but in any case, the case study will be retrofitted in the next uh, four or five months, so before uh, the end of the uh, of the winter. So we expect in in the next uh, um, spring to have the two building finished up and running and to start to retrieve, retrieve the real monitoring data. So thanks a lot for your attention. Okay, so we can move back to his build project. Susanna, could you give us uh, some feedback? Susanna, can you hear us? 
Hello, Larissa. Apparently, my coordinator can can enter. So um, I will try to do my best. Can I share my presentation or can you uh, share the slide, Larissa? Larissa? I cannot hear Susanna. Can anyone else hear Susanna? Uh, yes, I could hear. Ah, okay. Susanna, so... Yeah. Which Susanna? The connection is working. Uh, sorry, sorry, Susanna from his view. Hello. Mm. Oh, he's Susanna from Planet. Hello, Larissa. Okay. Can anyone hear Susanna? Nope, not me. I don't know if she's trying to speak. Larissa? Yes, I can hear Susanna. Well, I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, you can hear Susanna. I can hear you, Tony. I cannot hear anyone so else. I, huh? I Larissa? can hear you, Tony, but I cannot hear Susanna from his build. She's Susanna, can you hear me? No, it seems she. I can. Well, now she's mute or she's not talking. She can't hear me, but I could hear Jacob and Larissa and Susanna. Well, I can hear everybody instead of Susanna. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I cannot hear Susanna. Susanna, could you please? Yes, yes, we, we know we, we, you are here. We. Could you just please let us know? Um, perhaps you could uh, leave the room and enter again because we experienced the same problem as well. Uh, uh, yes. So if you could, yeah. So then just come back and hopefully this will work. And then perhaps Susanna can present uh, his build. Hello. Hi, Susanna. Thank you. Very Hi. Much. Sorry. Now, now we can hear you. Yeah, I'm our coordinator. Apparently, can enter into the session. I don't know what's happened with his lean, but we have been trying for the last hour. So I don't know uh, which are the technical problems. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. So I will try to do my best. I am the communication manager of the project, not an engineer, but. Uh, if somebody had some question or issues, we can discuss later. So can you share the screen for me in this case, Larissa? It's okay for you? Sure, sure. I have the screen. Can you see it? Okay. Yes, perfect. So this is the general overview of the project. Um, we are finalizing uh, this initiative. Uh, it was foreseen for the next month, but uh, we will finish in January, finally. Uh, as you can see, uh, we are 30 partners uh, from five different European countries involved with its demonstrations building and the project coordinator is based in, in Rome, uh, just in the place for sustainable places, 2021. 20, and uh, we had uh, different partners that cover uh, most of the different climates and geographical areas in Europe. We have a demo in Norway in Oslo, other demo site in uh, Madrid in Spain, and the other demo site is in Venice in Italy. Okay, so you can see that we had different uh, key actors of the value chain of the building sector uh, with big companies as we as uh, some research centers uh, very well now as in Tef, STIA and uh, public administration as the community of Madrid and other interesting small and medium companies uh, that are developing the technologies. So we can go ahead with the next slide. Okay, so our main goal is to define a collaborative refurbishment ecosystem focused on the residential and building stock in Europe. Uh, at least 60% of the primary energy reduction. So the application of that effective decision tree strategy with this platform is coordinated with a sustainable architecture and near zero energy building design concept. We also want to save at least 30% of the installation time in comparison with traditional refurbishment uh, models. 
and a payback period for the action that is lower than 15 years for the technology solution adopted. So in the residential building, this is one of the main challenges because you know that investment takes time to be recovered. So uh, it's one of the main goals of the project. Okay, uh, so we can go ahead. So we had different technologies. One is the uh, 3D printed fachada prototype that is uh, developed uh, by Bias is one of the important building company sector. Also, ONIS, a um, small and medium comp and company, very interesting, has developed a lightweight, flexible state uh, BIPB uh, with new generation and uh, also with uh, materials that uh, are very state of the art. Uh, providing a uh, passive pues, and active material able to generate clean and free electricity, no, thanks to the sun. So it's a renewable uh, installation. Okay. So we can go ahead with the other solutions. Also, Placo San Gobain is developing a super thermal insulating prototypes. Uh, we had three different base solutions for the Redville project. Ajitsun are tightness spray plaster able to meet the strictest requirements of the different near zero energy building regulations. An experimental Ajitsun based insulation solution for the internal use and also a new generation of facade system for external insulation intended to be installed over the system facade. Okay. And also other prototypes with an SAHP system design, fabricated, and tested at the University of Nottingham Laboratory. Okay, that can offer multinational solutions for the buildings. Also, STIA and Maetris are developing advanced band prototypes uh, that can help uh, also our focus on change directly the house behavior. And the scope of this approach is to go further and propose functionalities able to add directly on the inputs of the energy sources and on the outputs about the demand side finance best without a direct human input. Okay. And also, Raymond is an architect to the study based in Ron, is developing open bind libraries of advanced technologies that will be part of the uh, platform management system for Red Bull, part of the composition. Okay. So in Spain, we are developing a demo site with uh, some peculiarities. The building is a semi detached house for a single family. Occupy about five people, two adults and three children. The building is part of the social housing category built in 90 for in 90, 40 years with a total floor area of almost 80 square meters. Uh, obviously, it's an area for uh, with social problems uh, in Madrid. So the peculiarities of the place uh, are are different to the others. The most okay is uh, the the um, the standard of life of the people that is in this neighborhood is medium low. Okay. So here you can see uh, the peculiarities of the demo size intervention and results, uh, the renovation measures that has been uh, implemented in, in this demo site, and uh, the energy retrofit measures. Okay. So you can see in terms of energy consumption, final energy consumption, potential final energy saving, uh, which is are the results. Okay. I am not going to enter into detail, but you can read more carefully on the presentation. Okay, but we are combining the different technologies that I had presented before. Okay, in Norway, in Oslo. Uh, we have a building that is in a neighborhood in the outskirts of the city. So it's uh, based with two apartments plot, um, approximately 40 kilometers from the center of Oslo. Uh, so it's other, um, other demo sites with different social uh, peculiarities and characteristics different from Madrid and a different climate, of course. Okay. So you can go ahead and here you can see the renovation measures implemented. 
uh, with the different technologies and solutions developed within the frame of the project. Uh, also with the glazing renovation, the insulations, the air tightness and natural ventilation system, the temperature control, the efficient lighting devices and the solar panels and the energy retrofit measures that also have been implemented. Okay, so it's the same. You can see here the results with the potential final energy savings. Okay with the electricity and the thermal energy. And Itella is a small demo site. Uh, the peculiarity could be similar uh, to the characteristics of Madrid. It's a small uh, demo site uh, and also with uh, peculiarities in the, in the climate. Okay, it's very close to the city of Venice and the building is a semi-detached house, an apartment block of social housing typology, and it was built during the uh, 16th and the 70s, okay. So we can go ahead. And here also you can see the renovation measures implemented here. Maybe it's uh, a little bit more complex than in the previous uh, demo sites, um, what has been the results achieved. So here, uh, maybe, um, yeah, uh, the results are very different to the others. So I don't know if we finish the slides, Larissa. Yes, yes, these are all. Okay, the that's it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we... We progress to the discussion session. We are a bit uh, ahead of the time, but I guess we can uh, progress. So at this moment, we will uh, discuss about the challenges and solutions of, of the project. So representatives of all the projects that present now will discuss uh, inside their project what they, they learn, lessons learned, challenges, and what they could solve. So for this reason, we prepare this table. Mm -hmm. So I will invite um, yeah, the representatives of the project to start the discussion, please. I think that there are partners with some problems in the connection. Do you hear me? I think uh, you hear me, right? Uh, I can yeah. see, yeah. 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 Reynolds, yes. I can start if you want uh, from Renault Zeb uh, point of view. Apparently, uh, we have technical problems. Uh, Susanna, can you hear us? I can hear, I can also hear Michele. Yeah, I can hear Michele. I can hear, okay. yes. Susanna, I can I can. hear Michele. Ah, yeah. ah okay. Um, well. Neither Tony, neither Jacobos, I don't know what's happened. I don't know if this is my problem with my connection or if it's something more general. Susanna, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Ah, okay. Uh, we can hear Michele also in Jacobos. Uh, sh should we try that? I'm sorry to ask you again, but could you log out? Uh, go out yes, <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Don't worry. Thank you. Thank you, Larissa. Michele, please. Yes, yes. I was just uh, uh, wanted to, to start this discussion, just uh, uh, explain to everybody, or at least yeah, share with you our experience in uh, the issue we have had. I, I, I don't like to call them problem, but just challenge. The, uh, the, I think that this what is normal uh, norm, normally happen in a, in a in a retrofitting activity, also in real life, once in normal projects. Uh, what is uh, planned on the paper normally is not uh, is happening because always there are uh, uh, something there is something that you have uh, considered in the in the beforehand or something that uh, uh, not in, in in our case. We have, for example, I, I wrote here a deployment in, in the title of deployment from theory to practice, there is always a difference. Uh, we had the delays in logistics, something that we 
didn't uh, we, we didn't know for example the truck could could not enter into the the municipality because the road was smaller and there was a, a municipality regulation that doesn't allow this big truck getting in so we had to um, hire a sport truck outside the village for bringing you know all the facade close the uh, close by the, the, the pilot this is for example an, exa an example or issue related to the building when you start uh, doing the retrofitting there are something is that is broke broke it broke for example or uh, there are stones of the facade that, that collapse and you have to take it off or stick it to stick together so these are delays in the logistic in in the case of the project uh, the contractors they had to understand how to install the um, the units for example and in this case we did a lot of uh, uh, meeting each week between the manufacturer and also the contract the, the architect that, that was responsible in the field uh, to understand how to fix everything and they got a, a, a solution for solve issue related to the small sides of the some part of the of uh, some angles of the covering uh, so there are also bad measurement. It means that, for example, in the in the beginning, uh, they received the mani the manufacturer received uh, uh, some measurement related to the building, and afterward, these measurement were not so uh, certain. So all the manufacturing were based on this figure. So everything I sh should we we had to change everything on in the field with some uh, uh, manual configuration to say. Um, yeah uh, we yeah the public rules and regulation it is for example in the, the case of the, the the road but also um, in the case of durango for example uh, the building is uh, is a public one so if you are in the middle of a, of a policy transition so you have a problem because all the work is uh, paralyzed and uh, you had to you know to wait and also when you run for a public procurement, the public procurement has to accomplish with national regulation and they could have some unfortunate as well. So a lot of delay there, three months for getting a, a answer. And afterward, if there is a change, you have to go for another one a lot of time. So uh, the issue of the public building is, is uh, something that is uh, tricky sometimes. And of course, uh, extra budget. Extra budget is because, of course, when you have delays, when you have uh, something that is um, foreseen, something broke, breaks, and you have to replace, or you have to hire more manpower to to do the job or fix the job. Of course, everything goes toward uh, the extra budget, and uh, this is also a very uh, difficult to manage because. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, something that wasn't uh, forced in, into the project, so you have to understand how, from which partner or how you can manage this extra budget internally, because as you know, budget couldn't, couldn't be changed in uh, according to the grant agreement, of course, so it's something that uh, is also very tricky for the consortium and to take the decision for the coordination as well, because all the day on the phone, talk and try to find a solution is very, very complex. Yeah, and, and for the validation process uh, problem, so far we had not uh, we had no problem because as I told you, we are in the process and uh, we are mainly simulating uh, a ton of uh, real data that we are right now uh, registering and logging. So I don't have uh, any issue here for, for sharing with you. Thank you. Thank you, Michele. Um, um, I would invite I would invite uh, any any other representative of the projects that want to share the experience and discuss the challenges. Uh, I don't know if I mean if Recourse or Resbuild would like to comment on that, or we can we can do it from Plug and Harvest side. I think Susanna is here, so... Yes, okay. Uh, we, we can continue uh, on behalf of the Plug and Harvest project. Uh, well, uh, so I'm Susanna, an architect from Big Architects 
um, a company located in Barcelona, and we are one of the partners of the Plug and Harvest uh, project since um, one and a half year. Uh, and we have been leading the uh, implementation work package, with, which uh, actually brings uh, most of the um, challenges that we are discussing today. So, um, well, the, Michele commented several challenges which are already re related with the implementation, implementation on site as such. But I have to say that uh, on our side, the, um, let's say we haven't yet get into that uh, state because we have been resolving different kinds of uh, problems that were actually previous to the actual implementation. And these are related mostly to the um, well, collaboration with the industrial partners, uh, which uh, let's say could be easy, but uh, there are many things that can make it uh, a little bit more challenging. So uh, there were several issues that we experienced. Um, for example, uh, well, and they were of, co of course all related, which actually makes that they kind of, um, well, make one each other bigger. Uh, so the, 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 the first problem um, that we had was that we, we were looking for an industrial partner because we didn't have an uh, industrial partner capable uh, to, uh, to manufacture what we needed to, uh, to implement in, in the pilot. And uh, we were looking for this industrial partner, but uh, given that uh, the, let's say, the sizes of the, um, of the pilot projects were small, uh, in some cases, uh, the, ty the typology was not so attractive, maybe. The, uh, the, the projects were very complex because uh, each of them was actually located in different country, which is a typical situation in the European projects. And therefore, the industrial partners were um, kind of considering this, this project too risky uh, and too complex in order to, to give us, uh, let's say, their quotations for uh, producing the modules. Uh, we have been in contact with nine different uh, producers, of which only three of them uh, actually agreed to, to collaborate with us and gave us a, a proposal for the manufacturing of, of the, of the plug-and-harvest kits or plug-and-harvest uh, facade modules. Uh, and here we come also to the, let's say, extra budget, uh, um, well, extra, well, or budget uh, um, lack, uh, which is different than, let's say, Michele commented already on the construction side when there are some uh, products that haven't been foreseen. In our case, uh, there, there were several things. One, given the, let's say, the small amounts, so that makes that all the suppliers actually charge much more per, per square meter, uh, which is generally not expected in the, uh, let's say, original calculations for the, uh, for the budget for the pilot project. Uh, so this is the, let's say, small material order complexity and it really increases the cost a lot. Um, and then, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, th there was another thing that actually happened, which is uh, probably also due to the COVID situation, and it was this uh, incredible increase in the material cost, uh, which has happened mostly this year, when some of the prices of the materials actually even doubled, uh, which actually made that it was almost impossible to uh, fit all the necessary materials and uh, and the installation processes within the budget within the budget that we had available, uh, but finally uh, we were able to find a collaboration. We had to do a lot of um, steps behind, so let's say we had to um, decrease uh, certain uh, well complexities in the projects and. Uh, uh, let's say make it much much simpler and a little bit smaller, so we would be able to actually implement the so the, the, the solutions in in all the projects. Um, another kind of related uh, problem or challenge, uh, which has to do with the small material order, is also the testing process because uh, we are expected, and I think it's very important and good thing to do, uh, to pass through the uh, testing of, of the um, prototypes or of the, let's say, the developed solutions. Uh, but what happens is that uh, for the prototypes, in order to make them uh, as similar to the final real version of the project, 
Uh, so the prototypes, let's say, have to use the same materials. And if there is any innovation, which is actually the purpose of making the European project, and it's then also true for any kind of innovation in the construction industry. Uh, so that means that um, you need to uh, get that material already for the testing phase. Uh, the problem is that the manufacturers uh, or let's say the suppliers are not willing to provide such small quantities of, uh, of their products and therefore uh, we kind of stand in front of a situation where we cannot get the materials before uh, like actually ordering the quantities for the whole uh, project but at the same time we cannot order the, the materials for the whole project because we don't know whether the testing will be actually successful and whether the solution that we have uh, designed will work in all the um, well in all the aspects that we needed to work fire and acoustics and mechanical resistance uh, wind resistance which are the typical um, typical tests that we normally need to do uh, at the end uh, we have resolved it in a way that we will be getting the the materials all, to, all together, but just the particular materials which are uh, special. So, for example, in the plug and harvest solution, we are having a very special aluminum profile. It has to be extruded particularly for for our project. And uh, so, the the way how we resolved, how we mitigated this this problem was to uh, order a larger quantity. Uh, let's say, considering that the uh, the, the test will be either successful or the adjustments will have to be made uh, within the composition of the panel and not so much into the profile. So uh, these were some of these, uh, well, complications that we faced. I'm just checking whether we have any other, uh, any other issues. Well, there was the, there is of course the coordination between uh, production and installation companies, uh, given that in different countries there are different, um, different uh, ways how to, what they work, how to make contracts, how to purchase materials. Or, so, so all of these things have to be kind of, uh, well, dedicated. We have to dedicate a lot of time and a lot of management in order to, uh, make these things work. Plus, uh, I don't know how it's in maybe different countries, but but particularly in Spain, it's also not so so easy to find uh, personnel within the industrial companies, for example, to also uh, speak in English fluently or prepare documents in English. So that makes uh, also the let's say <laughs> the collaboration more interesting. So I think we mostly went through. Ah, okay, yeah. There is there is an, another one um, which is related to the um, pilot projects as, as such uh, when they belong to public companies or public organizations. The public organizations have very complex uh, tender procedures, and this makes again uh, the the procurement and the uh, contracting issues very complex and very long. Uh, for example, we originally faced, uh, well, we, we, we were expecting six months of tendering process in order to be able to actually contract the, the manufacturing of the facade, uh, which, uh, let's say, thanks to the open view and a very special approach by the local administration for the project has changed and we were able to do it in a much shorter period. Uh, but again, uh, it costs a lot of um communication and it needs the communication also between different departments within the organizations and that's something which actually makes very complicated the implementation so i think that would be it uh, from our side thank you Thank you. Can I invite perhaps Claudio from, from Hart to also uh, give his input in the discussion? Yes, for sure. Uh, so the, let's say, the issues, the challenges that we are facing are, let's say, uh, some of them are already mentioned and, are, and were unpredictable. So the, 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 the big problem, material shortage, 
So we have delays in the in the delivery of soft components. For example, the uh, compressor we use in the smart fan coil in the the, the uh, elements we are installing in the dwelling for providing heating and cooling, and uh, there is a. Um, uh, a global shortage of the electronics uh, that is needed in this kind of component. So uh, currently we have no uh, delivery, expected delivery dates and we are trying to uh, identify an alternative. Also, there is, as mentioned before, the, uh, an increase in material costs. So many partners are uh, worried about the 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 unexpected uh, cost increase uh, compared to the the budget they have and uh, mm, something that is not let's say related to the to the pandemic is a complex coordination between the consortium partner and local installers in the sense that sometimes local installers uh, are not used to um, to let's say, first of all, are not used to speak English, so it's it's uh, first of all uh, uh, a complex uh, um, uh, a complex coordination and, and complex interchange of information, and uh, also uh, there are different standards between different countries. So the Italian installers are. Uh, use it to work with some kind of technologies that many many situations are different from the one that the, uh, the, 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 the partners of the consortium are providing. And also, uh, last but not least, uh, we faced uh, and we are facing uh, complex management of the uh, building site and of the installation works due to the presence of the tenants, because if there are technical problems, for example, with the fan coils or with other equipments that are inside the dwellings, uh, we, we, we must, uh, let's say, go physically in the, in the different houses uh, with the people living there. So uh, we knew it, uh, but uh, let's say in the, in the fine tuning process, this is not so easy to, to uh, define the proper timing um, between the installer, the, cons the availability of the consortium partner and the availability of, of the tenants uh, in the different uh, period. For example, we had to, to do some uh, configuration activity in August and in August many people were on holiday. So uh, it was not our fault, but <laughs> due to the COVID, COVID pandemic, we had to delay some, some uh, configuration activities. So, uh, this is, uh, let's say, the, 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 the situation right now, but we are trying to slowly solve uh, every, every issue. That's all from my side. Okay, thank you. Anyone from his build or her, or I'm sorry, or he cost that wants to, to add to the discussion? Okay, if there is no one, uh, anyone from the other projects would you like just to comment or, or give any, any opinion? No, I guess, uh, Larissa, uh, I don't think we have anything else to add. I don't know if someone from Recostor has built would like to to add something. If not, then we can go to the questions, if there are any, or we can, uh, we can hear someone. I don't know if we need to log out or if someone would like to, uh, to add a question or if I mean, I don't know if the the the, the, um, the audience can comment, I mean, orally, or if they have to write the question or something, or the comment in the questions. I understand and, uh, the questions should come in the Q&A uh, box. Okay. Oh, there is okay. one. Yeah, now we have one. <laughs> okay. Okay, we, so perhaps we 
Uh, I will keep this this image anyway, so we progress to the, the question and answer. So from Angela Simone, um, any idea on how to solve the issue with installers and their opening uh, skills to other tools and technologies? Any thoughts about that? Mm, I can comment, I mean, from at least from Planet Harvest. Uh, Michele, you would you like to start? Well, yes, uh, if you want, the, we thought about that. In fact, uh, uh, in our case, we have uh, uh, we had training uh, section also for the installer, for the contractors. Uh, so we, we tried to cover all the, uh, the spectrum of the market related to the training. And we started training the trainer, the, the architect, architect for all over Europe for for spread the word of uh, our technology and also for them to start using. So we have this uh, cascade uh, training from up to down in the in the in the in the retrofitting process. And in the, in the case of the the skills, uh, well, uh, we have tried to 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 face it uh, through the training, but also. And in fact, there are, there are the training section. You can ha you can have a, have a look at them in in the renovzeb.eu page. Uh, there are the video. Everything is uh, is uh, online. Also, we have a YouTube channel. You can see the the training uh, we have, uh, we have uh, delivered uh, about the, how to use the tool. And uh, but also as is what I um, also I presented before. We we try to support in uh, on the field the the skills. Since we know that uh, all this, uh, our solutions are innovative in, in, in considering the current situation, so we try to create also video that you can download by the uh, OI code, and they also had this option to uh, to see this video, how to install, how to manage, and how to assemble everything to to support their their uh, the, the skill and their activity. I think that this, uh, at least this material we have created, this uh, I think is is very good for the for the improving the the future skill. That is one of the the strategy also of the European Commission is uh, also increasing job, but the job has to be like as um, um, improving the special the specialty of the skills as well. So we we try to to tend toward that direction and. Um, the technology we have used are the, the current one, so web streaming because of the coronavirus uh, the lockdown, but also we have tried to use on on site uh, meeting in the beginning, and um, yeah, these are the what we did, and uh, we tried also to to present uh, everything by by web streaming as well. Uh, so this is the the tool and technology. Our approach was was like this, and. Uh, the feedback was uh, really good from from and enthusiastic from from the architect and also for the audience in this sense. I hope I I could have uh, answered. Thank you. That sounds actually great, Michele. It would be nice to uh, see those videos also for us. I think in general, I just wanted to add that uh, yeah, that there is actually. Uh, a funny experience in, in these terms also because in some other projects that we've worked uh, at before, the installers actually finally applied different uh, technologies than the one that we proposed, for example, in terms of anchorages or in terms of connections. They just said, oh, we don't know this system, so we are going to use the one that we have known for, for forever. So this can also happen. Uh, one way also how to mitigate that would be actually to to ask their feedback on certain things and understand what is actually easy for them to implement and try to follow also these uh, these guides because they are they are actually the ones who are going to be then happy or not with the with the installation. Uh, just to comment um, as well, I mean in the for for the the Greek part, let's say of the pilots. Uh, let me open my. Sorry, forgot to open my to turn on my, my camera. So for the Greek for the Greek pilots uh, case in uh, planning harvest, um, we also have let's say a close collaboration with the installers. There is also 
one of our let's say partners in the in the pro in the um, yeah, in the project in the consortium uh, has also um, a built-in academy for uh, manufacturers and installers so there is a lab there that they uh, they they use in order to train uh, uh, installers and manufacturers to uh, for, for uh, innovative let's say solutions and elements so for since this is something that needs you know physical presence and due to COVID restrictions and travel restrictions, this is this has been done. Uh, this is this was feasible only for the for the Greek pilot side for the Greek uh, installers for plug and harvesting. Mean. Hope you were able to hear me. I don't know my camera has stuck, but anyway, okay. Yes, we did. You could hear. Okay. 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 One more question from Angela. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, not from Angela. Angela is just saying thank you a lot <laughs> and she will check the materials. Thank you, Angela. So another question from Tony Castillo. Uh, these innovative technologies are quite pricey. And also uh, it is well known fact that PEDs require an in-depth renovation and, in and this is more investment. However, who is going to pay for all this? Yes, if you want, I can uh, start again. Um, very good question. I remember when the project started, uh, it, it, is, uh, it was the question from our first project officer and uh, about payment, yeah, and, and pays and cost. Uh, of course, economy is what uh, is the trigger of uh, everything. Uh, talking about our case, Renozep, uh, uh, the the ownership, the the, the in building owner have been always involved in the in the conversation, and the, the increasing of the property value is one of the KPI we also con, con, consider. Why? Uh, just because we wanted to answer this question, uh, we have a, a, a bunch of solution in Europe. All you can do with whatever renovation you want, you can create a sort of. Uh, capsule to the moon, uh, it is just uh, a matter of, of money, of course. And why it doesn't happen? Because it's, it's, too, it's too much expensive. We, you want to uh, in, in, in implement all the solution you have, uh, but it's not possible because at the end of the day, you don't have the money and you don't know how much is it worth in terms of, uh, which is the increase in, in, in uh, uh, related to the uh, building value, the, 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 building, the building value. So we actually have worked in that line and we have created the KPI related to that, uh, just to understand if the um, investment, uh, how much is the, 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 break, the breakdown between the investment and improvement of the value of the value of the, of, uh, of the building. Of course, the value of the building should be always uh, higher than the investment. If not, there is no, traction there, uh, market traction. And um, also, the, uh, this is from the economical point of view. And uh, also, I have, I have two comments. Uh, the typical uh, the typical example is that these uh, solutions are prototype. Prototype toward tier A, tier 7. Of course, uh, the cost of the prototype, as you know, um, are always higher than what you uh, can find in the, in the market. And of course, if you uh, this cost could be decreased in the moment in, in which you start uh, put, push in the market and you have these uh, different margins there, so um, this is this is an aspect that you know how market works, but also um, uh, the the other my last comment is that renovation deep renovation it depends. Uh, uh, deep renovation in our case we try to decrease the cost uh, and also to decrease the. Uh, the bother to the occupants trying to stick outside um, the the facade uh, without creating problem. Of course, this facade has to be connected in, inside by pipeline for for um, heating system, water heating system, domestic uh, water and stuff like that. I know, but uh, we try to um, decrease the problem and decrease the yeah the bothering for the for the occupants. Um, 
and also I think it's, it's a very important aspect that uh, come to the eco economical part because uh, sometimes you have a lot of option there out, out there and uh, you can do the job very fast uh, and so it's che cheaper because it's fast without creating problems so it's better so it's, it's cheaper for that and the day of tomorrow in which your technology is on the market maybe also cheaper than the cost that we had in in our project because we jump from prototype to to real to real world at least well this is my answer uh, to our experience in Renault Zep. thank you very much tony for your question if i can add something larissa i completely agree with miguel but the question of what is something that we are trying to face uh, in Redville is when you introduce this kind of technological measures and uh, European directives uh, that uh, every state has to adapt as well, uh, you have to take into account the social aspects. Obviously, if we want to contribute to the energy transition and also we had a European initiative at the European the new European Bauhaus and the new renovation web, we had to consider together economic and social aspects because it's not it's impossible to advance of this. But of these kinds of technological measures, we also to consider uh, social challenges such as energy poverty or other issues that uh, part of the population in Europe, gentrification as well, are suffering. So it's something that the policymakers have to consider. Um, in Redville, we have um, also um, some participatory processes with the tenants. Um, and we are trying to study as well the social impacts of these measures. And always the main problem uh, is the price of the technology. You know? uh, how many years? you need uh, for uh, has a profitable investment no? uh, to achieve that the, the investment that you had uh, put for the refurbishment can be, can be real. So this is one of the main challenges that we have to take into account the social issues when we are uh, the deploying directives and strategies. Thank you for your input, Susanna. Um, anyone else would like to comment on this question? No, just just a quick remark. I mean, the, the idea is, I mean, as as Tony includes in his question, I mean, it's it's innovative technologies, which mean prototyping. Prototyping is always much much more much more expensive due to specific, you know, tests, certifications, standardizations. Uh, paying for very small, let's say, um, placing uh, very small orders for material and stuff like that. So uh, the idea and eventually these solutions, when they come into market is, uh, the, you know, in the, in the production scale, let's say, will uh, will are expected, let's say, to reduce the, the cost per square meter by over 50%. So it's almost close, at least based on our calculations, our, expect, our expectations, let's say, uh, are very close to uh, conventional retrofitting, even though that we consider, you know, innovative technologies like, I don't know, um, uh, thermal uh, collectors or solar collectors like PVs or quite innovative stuff rather than conventional, you know, insulations with stone wool and something you know, pretty, aesthetically pretty uh, from the outside. It's it's much more than that. It's, th th these are facades, let's say, which can be can become active. It's not something like a conventional wall where you try to, at least for the plugging harvest case, to try to, to enhance and armor your building, but you create a building that can adapt, actively adapt to the microclimate, let's say, of the building. So it's, 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 it's a different, it's a different perspective, actually. So the innovation is there, yes, it's much more expensive, but um, innovation, when the innovation comes into market, as Michele said, is expected to, to, to reduce the cost significantly. Okay, thank you. Any more comments? Okay, so we'll move on uh, to uh, our next question. 
Azimina Dimara, thank you Azimina. So my concern about the facades has to do with earthquakes. How can we, can we be sure for the sustainability in old houses? Well, I mean, for, for our case, this, this is a, a good question. Thank you, Simina, for that. But uh, I guess that the solution there is to, to to consider something much, much lighter because, again, the facade is, a, you know, a flexible thing. So you can use something much, much lighter in terms of weight and load in order to, to, to enhance the building. Of course, if you have something, I mean, how to say, uh, a very weak uh, load bearing uh, skeleton then I don't I don't think that you can do many things in terms of uh, you know of f uh, mounting a facade let's say at the second floor of a building you cannot do many things on that in any case so you can consider yeah. li lighter lighter let's say uh, material lighter insulation stuff like that you cannot you won't consider heavy batteries or HVACs to be mounted on the facade Thank please, you, please, Michele, Michele, please. Yeah, from from the Reynolds point of view, uh, earthquake, earthquakes, uh, we uh, we didn't uh, uh, treat this issue. is is a good point, uh, but uh, in the test we did to the facade, for example, uh, we passed all the, all the normal tests that you have to do in in this case for the market. But uh, I, I don't think that we run uh, through the earthquake test. So we also because it wasn't in, for example, in our in our proposal. So I, I cannot answer uh, to this. But uh, taking uh, Jakob's comment, I agree because uh, it is just a way of not only material but also a technical of construction because you have to allow uh, a, a bit of elasticity for. Uh, for withstand with uh, you know sh sh uh, land shakes, uh, and from the second point, the, the old houses. This is a very important point because uh, this is something that uh, is a problem actually in the in the in the in the city. Normal normally the center of the city you can find these old houses, and uh, there we have another issue in the in the municipality regulation. Normally, they uh, these are protected houses. You cannot change the facade. You cannot cover it. You cannot put uh, even PV system because uh, the aesthetic is the is uh, yes. you know. So this this is a very important issue. Um, we in fact uh, have experience in another project that we had to do something in Valencia, and we uh, we had a lot of problem. Uh, there is also an helicopter of municipality that that, um, that go and make picture to see if you have installed a PV system and you 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 get fined. So it's crazy. Uh, old houses is uh, is also a a, a very a, a, a problematic issue that it, I think is uh, is something that has to be uh, double checked and, and uh, cleared with the municipality and the regulation that normally we we face. Uh, this regulation is tremendously strictly strict. You cannot change, modify the facade, and you can you cannot cover. So, with just with this, uh, for example, in the case of Renault Z, that you go there and you put a second a second uh, skin, it, it could be done because it's against law. So, we don't have a solution there. Just to comment, also, I mean, uh, I mean, extend or compliment Michele's replies that. Uh, you know, earthquake uh, earthquake certification is not always the case. So, for example, uh, in there are places or uh, let's say uh, cases, uh, city cases that earthquakes are very rare or even zero. So you don't, you, you honestly, uh, the, the the regulations there are not very strict. For example, in Greece, in regional Western Macedonia, which is uh, quite let's say. Um, we, we, where the cases that we have, uh, uh, let's say, earthquakes quite recent, the, 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 the regulation is already there for the load-bearing uh, system, so the, the load-bearing skeleton of the building, so the load-bearing skeleton of the building has to be much more, much more enhanced and elaborate, 
uh, rather than conventional uh, ones or in other in other countries, let's say. So this is a local a local thing. So you have to take each case uh, differently to consider it differently. Uh, but in any case, the the engineer there is is allowed due to the modularity of the facades to use different materials as mentioned before, and of course adapt the the entire let's say. Um, uh, the entire thing according to the building um, to the building withstanding capacity if i may so this is an open issue for the architect or for the engineer that uh, will make the design using our solution to adapt to each local particularities again since i mean this is a modular solution and can be adapted to to different buildings i mean typologies architectural one aesthetic aesthetically, as well as, for example, uh, earthquake-wise. Sorry, yeah. Thank you, Jakovus. Uh, Susanna, um, I guess you, you can, if you would like, you can uh, ask yourself the question. What do you think? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, the, actually, uh, it's it's a curious curiosity that I had, uh, and I would like to ask the other projects representatives uh, whether when you were dealing with the providers of the PV panels, whether you, whether you had an experience that they would be ready uh, to provide you with advice on how to implement or what kind of panels to implement in the facades, because normally they are used to implement them more on the building roofs. And this is mostly going to the safety and, and fire issues. Thank you. Well, uh, again, in our case, just um, in our case, what we did in the in the beginning of the project, we uh, make um, we made a list of possible uh, solution that we already have on the market, because in our case, we have we didn't work into the innovation of the PV system. We just uh, try to go to the market and define which, which was the best option in terms of weight, uh, thickness. And uh, of course, uh, cost and um, performance. So what we did, we uh, in the beginning we had this uh, short list, and afterward we talked with the uh, producer. And in fact, in one case, uh, what we did, uh, for example, for the PV system, we bought. Um, we, we in the beginning we we thought in an option, and afterward during the process of the progress of the project, we uh, realized that uh, we had another one, but but. So we decide to, to go for another one and we just uh, um, talk with the producer for just make a, a sort of configuration for the clamp system for the uh, for the for the system but it was uh, nothing actually so uh, we went on the market and just bought something that we already had in the case of thermal panel we had more issue there because it's heavier we have a water pipeline. We have also water tank. Is most uh, is the weight is is uh, higher, and we had to work with the manufacturer to make some configuration that uh, was costly in terms. In fact, they they charged us for the for each panel more because of this change, and uh, it this was what we what we did in, in the case of Renz, and everything was uh, working out and fine. Thank you, Miguel. Uh, any uh, any other representatives of the project who would like to add to the question? No. Okay. Well, uh, right now we don't have more questions. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you have a final comments, final uh, thoughts about the workshop and, uh, and your projects. Not from our side, just again, I would like to thank you, you Larissa for moderating this and also for coordinating all the activity that is uh, behind this event that has been a, a, a long a great job and also to the organizer and for the rest uh, 
Mm, I don't have any other comment. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Michele. The same, the same applies for us, Larissa, from Planet Harvest uh, side. Just, I would like to thank you personally for moderating the whole thing. I, I know that there were there were times that I mean, uh, the, the the platform was not very, let's say, stable. But in any case, I mean, the workshop went very well. The uh, the audience, uh, let's say, uh, engaged, and I think that we presented. Uh, the main problems as well, not the problems, the main issues and the main achievements, the main challenges, the main achievements uh, for uh, the five collaborating projects, sister projects. So thank you all for participating. And thank you, Larissa, for moderating. It was very nice cooperating with you guys. Thank you, Jacobus. Susanna, would you like to add something? Thank you very much as well to everybody and especially for you, Larissa, that uh, you, ha you have been able to join all the events all together uh, and uh, continue with uh, our cluster initiative. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Claudio, would you like to add anything else? Yes, I, uh, obviously I, I would like to thank you also from my side and uh, it was very interesting to see, also to see that the challenges are very similar uh, among the different projects. So it's uh, it was a very useful uh, uh, moment. Thanks a lot for the for the initiative. Well, so thank you everyone. Thank you all the speakers. Thank you uh, uh, all all the participants as well for the questions. Uh, they were very much welcome. Uh, the website of all the projects that participate in this workshop it's uh, shown uh, in the on the picture now i hope you can see and uh, well thank you very much enjoying sustainable places we are 15 minutes ahead of the time but i guess uh, we can conclude this session thank you all thank you larissa thank you all thank you thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much thank you, thank you very much bye bye thank you bye bye thank you bye